pleasure for us because it's been a while since we did the last interview. So I'm very happy, Xandu, thank you for coming. I'm really happy, thank you for inviting me. We should yeah. start strong with, uh, would you say the life we live today provides a lot of opportunities or kind of more confusion for people today? I guess it's a really strong balance of both in the sense, of course, um, there's lots of things like technology, like getting to places faster, getting to places easier. So all these things would, would assume, make you assume that life is easier, life is getting there. But I think it also gives a lot of confusion because I really don't know where we're heading anymore. So we're getting there faster, but where are we heading? I think that question is bigger. I think before when life was a bit slower and life was a bit easier to live and less intrusive, because now it's intrusive, social media's there, you're in everyone's face. I mean, everyone can, can just know ex exactly what you're doing in your life. I think you're exposed that totally all the time. So I remember times when in Malta I could just play in the fields and there were sheep and goats. I mean, obviously I'm giving away of yeah. my age away, but what I mean is <laughs> it was easy. I knew like my day, I'm gonna grab a ball and that's my only option and I'm happy there. Nowadays there's lots of options, but which one is the best? And then how do I get there? And how do I get there quicker? So I don't really know if it's one way or the other. I think it's a mix of both. What would you say it was like the biggest period in your life that changed you the most? Obviously there are different stages of, of life that change us. I mean, there's the falling in love and getting hurt stage, which are big lessons, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's the understanding what you think you're understanding about life and society. But of course, one realizes that they never know enough about life and humans and everything. Yes. But I think um, one big one was just recently COVID. I, I think it, it really helped me sit down and reflect again about um, where I'm heading, what I should be doing, and what are the priorities in life, what are the meaningful things, things that probably, um, and I'm saying this a bit because I'm back to the fast track, but I think before it was so fast track that we never actually had time to pause. And now finally, I've actually had time. It started with this like kind of heartbreak moment. Was there anybody that broke your heart? Yeah, when we were kids, of course. It, it, <laughs> it happens. You fall in love. Usually you fall in love with the people who are older and you cannot have. So, of course. But there, you see, I see people always want to be happy. I embrace un unhappiness. I think it's part of the yin-yang. It's part of our life. I think more growth comes from pain, to be honest, because it gives us more empathy. We learn more about ourselves, we learn more about other people. So everyone says, I want to be happy. Actually, I really don't mind being happy and unhappy because I think happy is very short-lived and one-dimensional. You're happy and then that's it. Whereas pain really goes deep and then grows you as a person, grows you. And I think a good balance between both, I'm happy with. So Was there anything like you receive kind of advice from someone you really look up to and that maybe kind of change you in some way? I love to listen to people that can always teach me something, mentors. Um, obviously, the older you get, the more you can mentor others because you've been through certain situations. But two of them in particular are expressions in Maltese. There's one which says, and I'll translate it, of course, Hamar, which which means it's better to be embarrassed um, and get a red face than to get a black heart. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, if there's something that you don't like, something that you want to change, then speak out. Don't keep it inside because long term, in any relationship, friendships, relationships when it comes to marriages, relationships between couples, when it comes to family, if you don't say something that is bothering you, you, come, you might come to a stage where then it's too late. So always don't be embarrassed to just say something, you know, to get a red face of yes. a black heart. Mm -hmm. And the second one, I think is um, in Italian like patti chiari amicizia lunga. I think it's really clear to always be upfront. Many times people we try to always satisfy others. So we either wear masks or we don't say things that others want to hear to kind of keep the harmony. But I think it's much better sometimes to face an uncomfortable situation because once that is over then you're gonna grow much long term with people around you because you've been very straight from the beginning mm -hmm. and whatever decisions are taken by third parties and then by yourself together will we'll build a strong relationship mm -hmm. instead of just saying yes to say yes but the truth is I think no so like sort of be very clear and you have a long friendship obviously today you seems to be like extremely successful is there anything remaining like on your list that you would like to achieve many things because of course um, they say this about another thing, but success is in the eye of the beholder. So basically, um, success is something that is very, very personal, I think. So what maybe certain people deem as success is maybe not success for the person that's doing them. So I don't know, how can I explain? I come from athletics. So maybe 
a very talented person who's won races all their lives and then goes to the Olympics and wins a gold medal because they're super talented. Of course, they'll be happy. Of course, they've trained hard. But maybe they won't feel that as much as a success because it's all they knew all their life as much as someone who maybe wasn't as talented and then worked three times as hard and then managed. Mm. So success is probably measured in different ways. So let's say I've done, I've, I've achieved many things and I've had lots of achievements. Um, but sometimes even when you achieve a lot, it, it sets your, your own standards very high. So you could, if you, don't, if you stop achieving or you don't achieve as much, sometimes you put yourself down because you're seeing yourself as a lesser self. So especially if you achieve at a younger age, the older you get, you start saying, like, have I stopped achieving? Am I, am I less capable of success than I was as a younger kid? So of course you, you learn how to live with that. That's part of growing up, which is really nice, where you understand and you learn and you stop pressurizing yourself. <laughs> to answer your question, yes, I think um, I still have many, many goals um, and achievements that I'd like to, to get to. The older I get. I think I ask you something now that maybe nobody ever asked you before. Yes. Who is Xandru Grech? Who is Xandru Grech? Oof. I'm very complicated, I admit, and I'm not easy. Maybe at face value I might seem very straightforward and easy, and this is maybe the image I want to give. Um, but I think I'm very complex within. I, I'm really like ups and downs, so I can be extremes of happiness or extremes of unhappy. I can be... Um, on the whole, I think I can motivate others and make others happy. And I've got lots of energy inside, but it's very hard to translate that to yourself. So I, I think I'm, I'm a mix of, of many things. I'm, I'm a dreamer, but I'm also practical. I, I love doing a million things. And then there are days I just like, <laughs> I enjoy being lazy. I am either really calm and peaceful or I'm really like this. <laughs> so when you ask who am I, this is really hard because I don't even know myself, how I react. What I've understood with COVID and my age is that at least now I'm in a much better place to control my reactions. I'm still not there yet, but I'm a very emotional and impulsive person. And when I was younger, of course, that always came first. I think now I've learned how to count until 10 before I speak or do something, which is, which is relaxing me much more in the general picture. If this is your last opportunity to have interview ever, what is your final message? The older I get, the more I realize how short life is. And, I, and it's a gift. But it always depends at how we look at things in life, right? So if, if I could give a message, instead of us complaining about what we don't like, what we, what we want to change, what we... We should, first of all, start appreciating what we actually do have. And if we want to make any changes in our lives, um, we start making them. And to maybe try to smile more and be more tolerant and with other humans and flexible and just try and make this world a better place. Sometimes even just a smile or a little gesture makes it a, a better, no, you don't have to do massive things. To any children out there who are who are confused or who have dreams and maybe of becoming a sports person because of course I do lots of sports but whatever it is whether you're a pianist a violinist an artist a singer whatever um, nothing's gonna come easy and it's it's really important to keep believing the dream and to not see things from a negative perspective because things don't always come out as you expected them to but sometimes they come out better although it's not what you expected so never see it as a bad thing you know, sometimes it's, it's, you try to color something green or yellow, but they smudge, and all of a sudden you have a rainbow, and it looks better. Mm. I think it was fantastic to hear your point of view, because, yes, you're a bit uh, older today, 39, so you uh, have that vision, and, and you know. No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the chat. I think, uh, I hope people uh, learn something, and they have some value out of it, and stay tuned for more. Thank you very much. Thank you.